check this out. I think this is accurate on how it goes with the TMP9 fan. Especially dudes who go all the way back to 2009, 2008 here on the Knife Show. From about 08 to 2012, I did a ton of knife reviews. Most of them were under $100, I would say. I'll ballpark it. They were affordable blades, huge excitement level, and I think thousands upon thousands of you guys bought a bunch of blades in that four-year time span, just as an estimate. A funny thing happens, though. <laughs> Your wife finds out how many blades you're buying, and you find out how many you've bought and you're not using, and then you go, ooh, I need to put the brakes on this. <laughs> I think a lot of you guys have done that. And that's totally normal, by the way. Maybe you refine your own likes and preferences. That's cool. The point of all this in the introduction is the following. Things do change here on the interweb, phase two. But one thing that does not is that a lot of knife fans in TMP are still waiting for an unreserved recommendation from me then when they see that knife, they'll look at it, and if it matches their own preferences, they'll buy it, and they'll upgrade. This is just such a blade. I'm gonna give it a very high likability scale. It is new and fresh. This is my KRV on the Kaiser Vanguard Dukes. I believe a collaboration with knife maker Matt Cucciara. And man, do I love this knife. Oh my gosh. It is excellent. Uh, I mean, I've reviewed just a couple here and there that I've been so stoked on. I can reserve, uh, I can recommend it to you guys without reservation. This is just such a knife. To me, it has the ideal weight, 2.5, 2.6 ounces, the ideal size for utility tasks. Totally. It reminds me, shape-wise, of a couple different knives. Uh, I'll throw this out right off the bat. The 2550 Benchmade auto knife, the uh, mini reflex. It is, I've always said, almost a perfect EDC knife. And here you have a flipper manual action knife that does the same thing. Now, if you don't know who Kaiser is or Kaiser, I'm not sure how they're saying it. It is a newer, 100% Chinese designer and Chinese manufacturer. And like I'm saying in all these videos, if you think this is a junk knife, think again. This is matching, sometimes even exceeding the U.S. maker's quality levels. But the funny thing is a lot of the U.S. makers, to include like our favorites like Spyderco, use overseas production and they always have. Kershaw does the same thing. So it might is it coming out of the same factory as those knives? I don't know. I would not be surprised though. Uh, but the Dukes, and this one is in black G10. Dang, son. <laughs> is it a great knife? Really cool knife. I can't give it a five-star rating as it is now. There's a couple reasons why. I'll let you know. But let's talk about philosophy of use super, super quick. Uh, yeah, EDC. Not tactical. I wouldn't use it for that. But it would be so fun to gear check someone and they bring out a Dukes Vanguard. Kaiser Vanguard Dukes, I guess is her full name be fun. Instead of mini knives, I see a lot of mini knives, little tiny blades coming out in gear checks, and then out come the excuses. <laughs> I meant to carry this one, nothing. All right, okay. Uh, usually, not always, I'm carrying an EDC blade like this. If I need it, I'll pair it with a full-size tactical fighting knife, if I need it. It's, it's actually, to be honest, kind of rare these days I do that. I'll usually go with a mid-size, maybe a full-size EDC blade. This is I would consider it to be a mid-size EDC blade. A great gift knife, and that's about philosophy of use. How about uh, speed on this? The first thing I look at these days with a flipper design is one is the flipper tang, you know, extended and up. I gotta cut this off real quick, it's bugging me. Uh, I would say it is. The flipper tang is just about the right size. It's not obnoxious and it has a rounded guide to it so it's not digging into our thumb is that a minor thing yeah I just don't want to be grinding on knives out of the box I can do it I can jump them I can do a lot of things myself at this point to fix a knife design why bother though perfect though I mean this is excellent it's got a couple you know grooves on there and I got to bring this out now because it is so reminiscent of a knife that I've always loved in a lot of respects do you guys remember you got love you guys love when I bring competitive designs in the Lee Williams Flipper by Kershaw. 
I believe it's discontinued. This is a smaller one. And what was the number on it? The 1740. And I think Lee Williams made just a couple knives, and I think he kind of faded away. I've always hated the clip, but the knife, the blade itself, perfect. The size is perfect. I keep this one as a cast member. This one has a production stamp of November 2007 on it. It has a really interesting flipper mechanism on it, which is uh, multi-piece. It's not like one piece like this one is but it's still super cool and the reason I'm showing them to you is because they have very similar blade shapes which is a good thing I've always said that you're gonna have a lot of knife makers copy original designs dating all the way back to the 40s 50s 60s and you just see the same designs coming back being regurgitated we're basically seeing that here it's a hollow ground blade I think this one try to remember the steel on this 14 C 28 n this one here is in VG10, which is a good rust resistant steel. I would like to see an upgraded steel from it. I might give you insight on something as I end the video. Stand by. Um, but the blade shape is perfect, just like it was in the Lee Williams. Size wise, just a little bit lar larger, a little bit broader in the Vanguard Dukes by Kaiser. Kaiser? I hope I'm saying that right. I don't know. Anyways, I thought that's an interesting comparison. This is pretty collectible I think I don't know if in terms of value if it's gone up the Lee Williams flippers I don't think they have but I still think they're super cool knives the, I like the smaller one better because the, uh, the larger one which I actually sold just a little bit too heavy so good belly it kind of has a skyline look to it doesn't it oh another competitive option da, da, da. so dura coated skyline coming out Kershaw skyline there's one, some of the knife mods I was talking about so here you got my homemade goofball jimping going on see but this is i raved about the skyline you know shape forever and i still think it's beautiful it's got a really thin precise edge for slicing as does the dukes it's that way too and the hollow grind helps that as well the one thing i would like between these two blades is i like how this has flats for a consistent angle sharpener this one won't right here and it's got a hollow grind, so if you use like an Edge Pro Apex or something like it, it might be a little bit of a challenge. Lockup is excellent. Let's look at centering. Excellent. Chinese blade. 100% Chinese. As are a lot of the blades you've been carrying all these years, actually. They might be marketed under an American name, but if you look at their origin, you might find out they're Chinese or Taiwanese or Japanese. It has a pivot adjustment very similar to to the skyline speak of the devil so it's just a one-sided pivot adjustment i didn't see any need whatsoever to do it again lockup is solid speed is excellent too if you've noticed you know nowadays i really like a pocket deployment so i would in the broadest sense you could say wave but it could be a zip tie that's what i prefer flipper would pro probably be right after that because there's a lot of different ways to deploy it super quick sounds good when it comes out look at the handle now I've made a big point through the years to talk about what you're looking at here see this the milling of the offside or that uh, skeletonizing of the liner that is perfect so I've always taken the task the American makers that have not been able to do this look how much material they milled out Kaiser did it is excellent big holes getting rid of all the weight making it super light at 2.5 ounces that and that it's a flow through design they only have two knockoffs one back here one back here you don't really need a lanyard hole beautiful handle shape by the way very ergonomic sits in the hand there's no hot spots at all I really like this G10 version this is a black one I have seen a red and black G10 version I think there might be a titanium version out there, but watch your cost on that one. I think the cost goes way up. I know there's a five ounce, I believe, larger version of the of the Dukes, and that one's gonna be much more expensive and a lot heavier. So if you want a bigger version of this, you can look it up. Uh, recommended purchase place will be at the top of the screen for this. What a cool knife, three inch blade, perfect. Uh, I am gonna deduct a, just a point for likability. One is that uh, VG10, I'm kind of, like I said in another review, leaning away from VG10 just because I'm sick of sharpening so much. It's a lot of work for me. And also, I would like to see a different clip. You guessed it, a low-ride clip on that. 
and not so spoonbill and goofy. Uh, polish too, I'm not digging the polish clip so much on that. I'd much rather have it blackened, loop over. The best clip I can envision for this would be something like Spyderco, like a hardened spring steel clip that comes over a deep carry. That would just make my day very excellent. I didn't show you timing, by the way. It is a lot captured liner lock. As you can see, this is a great blade. Price. Uh, it's not going to be like super, super cheap, 70 bucks, but uh, the quality uh, levels are superb. I've shown you a couple competitive options, which actually will be much more affordable. The Skyline for sure, not the coated one for sure. Uh, here comes an interesting one that we haven't talked about for a while. It's just coming in as a cast member, and that is the Almar Nomad, speaking of VG10. So they ran this one in VG10. This is a Japanese produced one, and I've always liked the Nomad. I think it's excellent. It's got perfect jimping, choil. It too is a liner lock. This one's going to be lighter than the Nomad, and this one's going to be much more expensive. The qu interesting question is which clip would you prefer between these two? I don't think either one is that awesome. This one's too big, that one's too goofy. Um, I'd probably prefer this one more because it's smaller. I don't like big clips on uh, little tiny knives. That's just me. How about the Rat 2? Oh, that's a beautiful Hall of Fame EDC blade. Speaking of Japanese OS 8, this one wears OS 8. That is a cool, cool knife. And you can get these in Amazon for cheap cheap Taiwanese there you go Taiwanese produced blade told you overseas I sold a buttload of these with my review uh, then the link will be on the bottom from this it's such a great knife and it's a good steel it's not a superior steel but it's good and I don't really mind the clip on the rat too this is an old school Voyager 1 with my JB Weld epoxy mod on it we've seen forever modified clip so it's not so spoonbill and man is it lightweight and a great blade OS 8A in this discontinued version of the Voyager, but one of their best EDC knives that Cold Steel ever made. Uh, between these two, which one would you prefer? Nothing fancy. Ooh, that is a tough question. Mm, that's a tough question. For EDC in, I'd probably go with this one because it's even lighter. It's like 1.7 ounces. Oh, you pussy. I know. You asked. I'm telling you. And the funny thing is, is I don't vary from my, my likes. You know, someone says, oh, you know, if I get some criticism online, I don't give a shit. <laughs> I don't. I just stick with my likes. And that's what make this sh makes the show worthwhile because it has a rudder. and has a philosophy that's consistent. Yes, even after 10 years. How about the Delica in ZDP 189? That's a great blade. Speaking of a zip tied mod. Woo. I don't mind the clips on Delica's and Endures either. It's freaking cool. That's a Seiki City produced blade. Incidentally, the craftsmen in Seiki City are retiring or they're just dying off. And from what I've heard in the industry, there aren't a lot of new folks over there in Seiki City and the Japanese knife making cities that want to take up the banner and continue to make knives. Interesting, huh? So that means the quality could go down, the price could go up, or perhaps Japan ceases to become... Uh, uh, to maintain its knife making capabilities. I don't know. I've just heard that from industry insiders. And then uh, the discontinued Lee Williams. Uh, I will say this on camera, my likability scale on this is pretty high. Uh, tentatively four stars for a perfect blade shape, super fast deployment, a decent price point. It's going to have really excellent collectible versions. Standard black is always a win, but the black and red even better. No hot spots, perfect flipper design, solid lockup, uh, phosphor bronze bushings, by the way. Little bit deduction for the clip, which uh, thankfully is tip up and not reversible, incidentally. I didn't say that, but dang, is this a great, great knife. Here's the box, by the way, that it comes in. The Kaiser Dukes A1 Black G10. Great knife, great knife. Nothing fancy. Thanks for watching. See ya.